All right, well, we've got our basic route planning all knocked out. Now it's time to go ahead and work out some aircraft performance. The way you're gonna do that is consider this button, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. So all of these bezel buttons, we have to consider them. You wanna push every single button you can push, okay? Don't leave any stone unturned. We're gonna start here in the top left-hand corner and ensure we have selected the appropriate airplane. You may have none, you may have a lot, I don't know, but make sure you have the correct one selected. Then it probably says basic aircraft profile, and you should be following along right now. So basic aircraft profile, that's the one that the system just loaded up, defaulted to, and it doesn't actually have any flight planning in it, okay? And I see this very often on stage checks that the basic aircraft profile is there. The student didn't actually build a profile, which means you didn't do your flight plan. Garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. So the way you fix that is to type edit, change the name to something that inspires confidence that you actually did some flight planning, something like check ride profile. Oops, check ride profile. Then, not climb true airspeed. I'm just going through the common pitfalls here, guys. I'm not talking about everything. I'm talking about the things that I see messed up pretty much every single time. We get here, and if it's 70, a Cessna 172, it says 74. Sounds good, right? This says 10, and this says 500. Your examiner is no stupider than I am, and neither one of us is going to look at that and believe it. And the reason is that it's asking you what your climb true airspeed is. If you compare an indicated airspeed of 74 knots to a true airspeed, it's not correct. Furthermore, you're not supposed to climb in a Cessna 172 at VY for indefinite periods of time. You're supposed to climb to 1,000 feet or a safe altitude, which is, in my opinion is 1,000 feet, and accelerate to VY plus 5 to 10 knots in most of the POHs. That's called a cruise climb configuration. We think we're going to be climbing at an average speed of 80 knots, 80 knots. Let's do some math right, right fast and figure out what 80 knots is. If you go do, um, if you grab your E6B, or let's type, just do the, you know, the math number here. We said 80 knots times 0 0.02 equals 1.6 times the altitude we're cruising out, which is uh, 8,500 equals 13 extra knots for the true airspeed. Add that to your 80, and you get 94 knots, okay? So it's actually 94, not 74. 94, big difference, it's 20 knots of difference. It's so much, so much, so different that one might be able to argue that you were wrong if you had put that there. Climb true airspeed, that comes from the POH. Here's a POH. Climb true airspeed is going to be your climb speed. Uh, wait, what? Did we already talk about that? Let me put that down. Let me open this up. Slide up. Grab the iBooks. And drop it on top here. What are we looking for? Climb fuel per hour. Oh, fuel burn. That requires a little bit of math because they don't give it to us. Well, we're going to do five minutes. From 6,000 to 8,000 takes five minutes. 60 divided by 5 is 12, so it's a factor of 12. We burn 2 minus 1.4, so 0.6. 12 times 0.6, I can't do that. So clear 12 times 0.6 equals 7.2 gallons per hour. Climb fuel per hour. Come on, you can do it. 7.2. Climb rate. Um, was 425 on average over the course of the climb. Cruise true airspeed, cruise performance. Read the notes, guys. I'm just helping you with the big ticket items here. Okay, the next one I see a lot, they, I, they say to me, oh, I planned for 8,500 feet. And I go, cool, is that indicated or pressure? Indicated, but well, what's that say? Pressure, right? See that? Pressure altitude. Boom, man, we gotta go down another rabbit hole because they don't know what pressure altitude is. Happens 99% of the time. If you've ever done a stage check with me and you think I'm making fun of you right now, I am not. All student pilots get this wrong. 
And it's probably absurd that the FAA even asks pressure altitude to uh, pri at the private pilot level, because usually we run the calculation and the difference ends up being so negligible that nobody even accounts for it. It's ridiculous. And furthermore, you'll have to know this for your written examination anyways, how to calculate pressure altitude. Use your E6B or just subtract uh, the current altimeter setting from 2992 and that'll give you your factor to subtract from your indicated. In all likelihood, it's gonna be such a negligible number, you're still gonna plan for 8,500 feet, which today I'm just gonna use 8,000 because I'm trying to show you that all I care about is that you know that, okay? Select 65% power at the appropriate temperature or interpolate it to the appropriate temperature. Today's a beautiful standard day. How lucky am I? 65% power. 64 is 99 knots, 5.2. 99 knots, 5.2. Just plug those in. This one is not true airspeed, so there's no work required on my part. There is not a descent chart in this POH. There's nothing I can do, so I'm just going to stay with 99. 5.2, and I'll just make something up. 500 sounds reasonable to me. Now I have built a check ride profile. It'll take you a lot longer. That's the abbreviated version. Bear with me, okay? And then finally, select the appropriate altitude. We want to cruise at whatever gets us the best time and route with the least amount of fuel. So I guess we'll take 10.5. That's it. That's these three buttons. We're going to stop the tape. Come back and we're going to do these three buttons. Hope you enjoyed that.